Hello and welcome to Movie Recap. Today I am going to recap action, sci-fi, thriller movie, Paradise. In a world where you can receive someone's life to gain youth and trade your life for money, biotech startup company Eon struck gold with their DNA matching technology that has life-extending abilities. Working at Eon, Max Toma's only objective was to gather more donors. But when his wife loses about 40 years of her life to pay off a loan they couldn't afford, he recognizes the ugly truth of injustice. An attempt to restore her lost years not only marks him as the target of a terrorist group fighting inequality, but also introduces him to the presence of cheap illegal organizations mimicking Eon's tech. Navigating through this, does he get his old life back? Max Toma is named Eon's Donation Manager of the Year, as he has successfully advised the transfer of 276 years in less than a quarter. Eon's CEO, Sophie Thiessen reminds the gathering that numerous people would have achieved even more greatness if this tech had existed in the past. To ensure time does not get in the way again, she announces that 15 brilliant scientists have been given the gift of time through the Lucy Thiessen Foundation to prolong their research, abilities at Eons Chrono Clinic in Berlin. These scientists are being monitored by doctors and therapists after their rejuvenation procedure. Suddenly, a nurse pulls out a gun and kills the scientist closest to him, then proceeds to kill all the other scientists as well. He is later revealed to have been an undercover agent of the Atom Terrorist Group, which claims responsibility for the mass attack. Lilith, the head of the group, proclaims that they will continue to end the life of every recipient as they believe that Eon's tech was giving rise to inequality. Eon's new head of operations, Novak, informs Sophie of the infiltration at Eon. Sophie's bodyguard, Kaya, replies that a thorough employee background check was already being held to avoid such an incident in the future. The next evening, Max is returning home with his wife, Elena, when they see that their apartment had caught fire. Max tries assuring Elena that the insurance will cover their losses, but she remains devastated at losing their home. Their lawyer, Luna Ackerman, informs them that since the fire was found to be caused due to an open flame, they cannot receive any compensation from their insurance. This would mean that they have to repay the loan of about 2.5 million by themselves. Elena reveals that she had signed herself up as collateral for the bank loan, and since Max did not have a living match in Eon's database anymore, only Elena could save them by donating about 40 years of her remaining life. While leaving Luna's office later, Elena is taken in by the police. Desperate for help, Max meets Sophie and appeals to her. While she promises to look into what can be done, Max does not hear back from her for several weeks. With no other option available to him, he helplessly waits at the Chrono Clinic for Elena's procedure to be done. Later, he takes her home to the only place he could afford with their low funds. Over the next few days, Elena ages rapidly to ultimately reflect the 38 years she donated. Suddenly, Max is informed one day of his promotion to senior donation manager. Devastated by the effects of Elena's forced donation, Max intends to leave Eon when he spots Sophie. Unfortunately, she refuses to even talk to him. A few days later, Elena is taken to the hospital, and Max is informed that she suffered a miscarriage due to the donation procedure. Determined to reverse the effects of the procedure, Max follows a lead across the border and into Lithuania, securing multiple fake passports and a gun. Max returns to Berlin and follows Sophie to her residence one evening. Keeping watch through the night, he follows Sophie's car to the cemetery. The next morning, he finds the young woman who got out of Sophie's car alone in the cemetery and attacks her with a taser on the grave of Lucy Thiessen, near which he found the young woman. Max leaves the sign of the Atom Group and puts the unconscious woman in the trunk of his car. A while later, he takes Elena to where he had hidden the young woman and tells her that she was the recipient of Elena's time donation. He introduces the woman as Sophie Thiessen. At the cemetery, Kaya and Novak track a car that was seen nearby to Maximum. Meanwhile, Max desperately tries to convince Elena to leave the country with him for the reversal procedure he had arranged. They make their decision right on time, and when Kyra and Novak get there with their team, they find the place empty. Just as they were reaching Lithuania's port, Klapida, Max and Elena notice police vehicles and worry that they have been caught. As expected, the police were checking all vehicles, but Max and Elena make a narrow escape with the help of a family. Successfully on the other side of the border, Max and Elena make a stop to wait for his contact, Dr. Berg, to give them a call with further directions regarding the reversal procedure. A frustrated and irritated Sophie informs Max that she was Marie Thiessen, Sophie's daughter. When he says that he knows about Sophie losing her daughter, Marie clarifies that it was her elder sister Lucy who died. 
She continues to try and convince him and Elena of her true identity, but Max refuses to believe her. On the move again, they find an abandoned hotel and settle in. Driven by his objective, Max tells Elena that Marie could still be her match. When Elena reminds him that they cannot resort to reckless behavior, both of them realize how their views have changed. A while later, Marie attacks an unsuspecting Max with a loose door handle and manages to escape into the forest outside. But just as her phone connects to Kaya, she slips into a swamp. Abandoning all thoughts of hiding, she desperately calls out for help. Having followed Marie, Elena helps her out of the swamp and gets her back to the hotel. She lets Marie clean up and notices that she doesn't have scars from the donation procedure, similar to herself, proving that she was indeed not Sophie. When she tells Max about this, he insists that her skin must have regenerated after the procedure. He warns her that they shouldn't let her manipulate them. Overwhelmed by his love for her, she kisses him, leading to an unboxing session. Meanwhile, Novak announces that he has tracked Marie, and the team gets ready to leave, even as more reinforcements arrive at the hotel. Max and Elena are woken up by a group of armed young men. When asked if they were from Eon, Lilith, the head of the Atom Group, enters the room. Later, Lilith informs Max that Sophie always knew about Elena being her match, but instead of convincing Elena to go through the procedure as her donation manager, he ended up getting married after falling in love with her. She even brings to his attention how their loan had been sanctioned with Elena's life as collateral, and quite conveniently, just when Sophie needed an urgent donation, their house went up in flames, and the old man who was Max's only match in the database met with a strange accident. This ensured that Elena would have to make the donation, which meant Sophie got what she wanted anyway. Lilith even says that Max and Elena plan to use Marie exactly like Sophie used them. When Elena replies that the Atom group wasn't much better, Lilith gives her a gun and provokes her to kill Marie. Faced with picking either Marie's life or her own, Elena is still unable to kill the girl. At this, Lilith points out that it is considered righteous when doctors at Eon take away years from someone's life, but it becomes clear how wrong it was only when forced to make such a choice ourselves. Max receives a message from Dr. Bird just then, and Lilith tells him that they have information about Novak and Kaya getting to the hotel soon. With Sophie instructing Max to get Sophie alone, Lilith sends him out to meet the reinforcements from Eon. He announces that Marie is safe and will continue being safe if they don't harm him. Inside, Lilith informs a member of her group that if Max messes up their plan, Judas will ensure that Sophie doesn't return alive. She says this while looking at Novak outside. When Max demands to speak to Sophie, a young lady walks out to meet him, speaking of her daughter's innocence. She offers Max an extra 10 million to begin his life with Elena again. Not tempted by the offer, he tells Sophie that he's not going to give up Marie for some money. Putting his plan into action, he tells her that she can check on Marie herself and adds that Marie's life would be in danger if Kaya insisted on joining Sophie inside. When Sophie agrees to follow Max alone, Kaya realizes that everything was a trap. She asks how Max knew that Sophie was going to be here in person. When Max is unable to come up with an acceptable answer, Lilith instructs Judas to pull the trigger on Sophie, and the rest of the Atom group opens fire as well to ensure the outcome. In this chaos, Judas loses his life, somehow managing to dodge the firing from both sides. Max finds his way inside the hotel to where Elena was waiting with Marie. Marie manages to grab a gun, unknown to Maximum. Just before they rush out and find a car to get away, while Max gets busy starting the car, Marie pulls the gun on Elena. When they realize that the gun had no bullets, Elena punches Marie repeatedly and knocks her out. She then drives away with Max and an unconscious Marie. Meanwhile, Kaya calls the last dialed number from Novak's phone. Following the buzz of the phone inside the hotel, she finds that Lilith had passed away. On their way to Dr. Berg's location, Max finally sees the situation for what it was and tries to convince Elena that they cannot end Marie's life. In a bizarre reversal of roles, she reminds him that their innocent child was taken away by Sophie. When Max insists that they should take Marie to the hospital, Elena stops the car and asks her husband to get out if he wanted to see her alive, leaving him behind. Elena continues toward Dr. Berg's location. Once there, she realizes that Dr. Berg was quite a young-looking fellow. Meanwhile, a bus from a refugee camp passes Max as he walks in the opposite direction. Elena sees this bus after her procedure as it reaches Dr. Berg's temporary clinic, and a bunch of kids get down to wait for their respective procedures. Elena then drives away, leaving Marie there. On the other hand, Max reaches Lithuania's refugee camp. 
Marie eventually manages to find her way back to Kaya, who leads her to Sophie, who was alive due to the bulletproof vest she was wearing. Kaya then resigns from working for Sophie and states that she did not want to burn homes and arrange accidents for her anymore, proving that Lilith was right about Sophie's involvement in these incidents. Over the course of Marie's post-procedure aging, Sophie refuses to give up a few years of her youth to her daughter, despite being an obvious match. She justifies herself by convincing Marie that her research was more important. A few months later, Max sees a young and pregnant Elena at a beach with a man, walking away from them. He joins his companions of the Atom group on their way to the next target. His decision to join the group comes after his acceptance that time donation was creating inequalities that needed to stop, at least for the sake of the next generation. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thanks for watching.